Okay, good Monday morning. Um, this is John Bushka. I want to talk about a documentary film called um, Power Grid Down, Power Up from Paul Revere Films. Um, and I think it's um, directed by David Tice and written. Um, it's about slightly less than an hour long. You're, you're actually encouraged to go to their website to, to play the film, which then plays from Vimeo. Um, and there's some question, there are a couple of copies on YouTube, it's some question as to whether they're legitimate right now. Because one, I saw one of them got taken down. So you should go to the, the actual site, which I can show you. Um, it looks like this. Um, it takes a minute to come up. And um, it will prompt you to leave your email address and then you get it to watch a copy of the film. Um, a lot of time, and there's an, it's narrated by Dennis Quaid, who does an interview on Fox News. It quotes an, an, early, an earlier CBS 60 Minutes report and talks about the four major problems, which are physical attacks like the one in 2013 in California, or recently a big one in North Carolina about um, cyber attacks, which possibly, um, that might be overplayed because it's what you call an air gap that, that um, protects an actual power station from the ordinary internet topologically. I can't just log on to Dominion Power and you know there's no way I can actually do that topologically. So you'd have to do something else to bridge it. Um, and then EMP attacks, which an enemy could attack, an enemy of the United States could um, impose by, um, you know, with a high altitude nuclear war blast, which might be more likely than even a conventional nuclear blast as a strategy of warfare if you thought of the world as a, as a zero sum game. Um, and then, of course, solar storms, extreme solar storms like Carrington events and the, the near miss that we had in 2012. I talked about some of this in a blog post on March 19th. You can also go back and look at that. Um, but what I would encourage, you know, what I would encourage, and I would also, I'll just share, share with you a picture. Here's some wind power. This is on um, in the Arbuckle Mountains in Oklahoma, and off of I-35, going from Oklahoma City to Dallas. I thought I'd share that. Um, but um, what the film really wants you to do is become active. It's not. Uh, it was shown in LA docs, but this doesn't seem to be aiming to be distributed in a commercial way through ordinary movie distributors. Now, I may be speaking out of line. It may be that it may be that they will, and it will show up in film festivals or AFI docs or something. Maybe it will, but they want people to get involved and write to their congressman. Or I don't send form letters that are written by somebody else to politicians. I always write my own because I feel that that just looks like it's a mass effort. But they there's a real question about the way um, people will become engaged in an article like this, which is sort of like climate change in a way, except that this could be more urgent because if an enemy took out our entire power grid, for example, if, the, if Russia did out of spite over Ukraine or North Korea did, which we were worried about a couple, few years ago, um, we would be without power for months and many of us would not survive. And then that brings up the whole question of the moral, what people on the right particularly believe is the moral impression, the moral or you cost for people to engage in prepperism and be prepared. Some people see that as part of your basic character if you're prepared to do without. And that has an effect on national security. If there's a perception on, the, on an enemy's part that we're not prepared, it could be seen that way. Um, the, the Yesterday I was in a Zoom session in a private Facebook group about screenwriting and we were doing a viewpoint chart on a proposed, what could be a proposed movie, um, dramatic movie about climate change. And there was the issue of 
whether it's urgent now or whether you can put it off because it doesn't affect you now as much as it will later. And there's the issue of whether you use, you know, peaceful means or coercion. And much of the same, many of the same items that came up in that viewpoint chart that we drew yesterday in this Facebook group, um, which is private, I can't really show it, but m maybe I'll be able to later that they'll put it up in a public place, um, would apply to the power grid also. Many of the political arguments that center around climate change also apply to the issue with the power grid. Um, because the regulation is spotty and there's a lot of um, sort of semi-crony capitalism and so forth going on that gets in the way of actually fixing the grid. The other thing that you could probably say, and actually, well, this illustration from a model railroad in front of me on the blog post is illustrates that those are, those are windmills or tur wind turbines. But if I don't really have a picture of a solar collector, I could found I should get one. But um, if you could get homeowners and apartment buildings to all install solar collectors and then sell the power back to a power company, that would probably do a lot to decentralize the grid and make it more resilient and make it less likely that an entire country could be taken down. And then again, I don't know how an EMP or a solar storm, a, a mass, a huge coronal mass ejection or something like that. I don't know how that would affect um, hospitals and homes that are run on generators and so forth. Even my own house, when I had a house, had a generator. And so I didn't really feel the power outage from the Direco in 2012 the way some other people did. I It was three days before we got our power back, but I had power back in two minutes, essentially, even after the big storm came through back in June, late June of 2012. So that's kind of it for today. Um, read the blog post, watch the movie, I encourage you to go through the website, because that's what they want you to do right now, and that's how they want to distribute it. And, um, and consider getting involved in the issue. Because this, this I may, I don't usually get involved in promoting joining activism myself, I usually just write, but this could be a little different.